Now we're getting into the meat of the software. We're going to talk about menu programming right now. So go to your back office, and then we're going to go to Setup, Menu Setup, and we're going to talk about a couple of things. You see there, Menu Categories. Okay, Menu Categories are as follows. You know, you have your food, your liquor, your soft drinks, etc. So this is all based on reporting. You can do a report based on just your menu category sales, etc. So, but you definitely want to set up your categories and place each individual group into a category and then items into the groups. So you'll see there, and you can actually hide that if you'd like. Now let's talk about menu groups. We're going to go to menu setup again, scroll down to menu groups, and you can see here that you have two pages of groups. Now we do want to keep our cashiers or servers uh, down to the fewest clicks possible. So we, you know, most of the time you want to stay away from having two whole pages. But if need be, that's there. So what you're going to have to do, this is going to have to be mouse oriented. You can click on the button and edit an existing group, or you can actually click on a new one. But if you want to move them around, this is exactly how it's going to be on the touch screen. All I did was I had a right click on the button and I moved it into position. And you can move it however you like. It'll, you see the green is just exactly where it's going to go. So you move it into position. So if you click on it, you can see that we can edit here. You can have a secondary language here, which we'll really get into in the other operations. You can show a caption, uh, not available for, uh, all these different not available for is dining orders, bar tabs, etc. And you can choose a picture as well for that. The other thing is if you want to create a new one, you're just going to do the same thing and just create those edits and you'll be good to go with groups. One last thing I wanted to mention with respect to categories and groups is actually scheduling the groups. So let's say you have a lunch menu and you have different pricing for that group for that specific time. This is great. It's the same schedule we've seen on a, a couple of different occasions for employees, etc. So it's the same exact schedule. You, you're going to edit the exact same way, but you just basically select a group and you choose your timing. If you want to have a lunch menu on specific things, you have a group that's called lunch and you have those items in there and that's how you're going to have to have your scheduled pricing, etc. for the group. All right, let's talk about menu items now. We're going to go to setup, menu setup and menu items. This is going to be very similar. Now you see all of your groups right here. Now this is exactly what it's going to look like on the touch screen, okay? So you're going to see little words like this, top level item, and we'll get into that in just a second, and these are just regular items. But you can see all of your groups here are quickly and readily available. The other great thing is you can edit your menu groups right here. So hopefully you can see that, that these menu groups can be edited. You can actually go to your pizza builder, which we'll get to in just a second, your force modification, auto prices adjusting, menu recipe for inventory tracking, etc. So this is a great screen. You don't have to go through and just edit your categories, just edit your groups, and have to click through all these, all these screens. There are so many different um, shortcuts that you can use to be able to access each screen readily. So, Let's go ahead and, and, and talk about moving these again. So I just wanted to remind you that we just this is going to be very mouse oriented. So in your back office or what have you, um, you're going to want to be able to create these things. It's not going to be able to be done very well with the, with the touch screen because you are going to need to right click and drag. Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and see what it's like to edit a menu item. So we'll look on the barbecue ribs here. So we have the full item name here. You also have the secondary language feature that we can put in there. Um, then we're actually going to select the, um, the food category on this one, and you can actually adjust all your categories here, which is another shortcut, which is great, and apply that category. Um, you can show the caption that we have established on the receipt, um, and then uh, we're also, also going to have the uh, picture right here that we can select. So if you want to select a picture, now any pictures you want to put in the software need to be in these files, okay? So if you want to have those pictures, just put them in your, it's going to be in your program files under Aldello, and then you're going to go under pictures and see this, okay? So I just wanted to show you that screen. We already have this picture created and chosen, and we can also have a large picture name that we can do. Also, if you want to get rid of a color or, or change a color, you definitely can do this, and this is your color scheme here, and you can pick those. Now, when we program menus, we typically don't put pictures in. Uh, you, you definitely would, could edit that, but we can 100% go ahead and choose all the colors for you, and we can define custom colors as well. So there's going to be two pages here. You're going to have the default item price. We have this as $15.95 on this one. Then we have the dine-in price. You have a variety of price changes here, delivery, drive-through, all those kinds of things. Because, you know, your portions may be different and all that kind of stuff. 
So that's a great opportunity there. Also, this is for remote kitchen, kitchen printing. You want to choose the printer, and that's the thing is network printers or printers that are a serial cable attached to a, a, client's, a client computer, you definitely want to choose the appropriate printer to send to the kitchen uh, the, 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 this specific order because, you know, you have the prep area and you have the grill items and all those kinds of things, and you want to choose that specific printer. Now, if you just have one in the back, you're going to be good to go. The other thing you can do is you can actually apply a barcode to this individual item, and that's great for the retail screen, specifically for food. It's a restaurant. We're not really going to do that. And you can also show a modifier type, which is great, and we'll get into modifiers in just a second, but I want to show you that. Then you can also, this is where you're going to 86 an item. If the item is no longer available, you're going to go to menu uh, items, and you're going to basically go to this page one item right here, which check that, and it's no longer available. Uh, if it's checked, it's available. If it's unchecked, it's no longer available. Just want to clarify. Um, also, you can have the pizza builder screen here. You can have a print pizza label here for specific pizzas and stuff like that. Um, now, granted, these aren't applying to this specific barbecue rib item, but I just want to explain the menu to you uh, in this actual screen. Then the other thing is when you have your taxation applied, this individual item you're going to choose taxation one, but you can have multiple taxes, and then you can also have if it's off-premise catering, it's tax-free. Um, and then the other thing that we want to discuss is page two, but you can also look at all these other things here uh, at your leisure. But page two, we can have a menu item description, which is a pretty great feature so that you can actually print out, print out on a receipt or you can actually show a server exactly what it is. If you have strange names and the server doesn't quite remember or the cashier doesn't remember, you're good to put those things in here. The other things you can do is just review all of these things and applying different menu modifier builders are going to be in here and you can go to edit and anytime you see this little thing you're going to be able to edit it. The other thing I want to discuss here is you have a delivery charge and delivery compensation. Hopefully you're noticing that there are three different ways to apply delivery charges and compensations. So it's, it's, it can be per item, per job, uh, for the employee, per uh, default, etc. So you see that there's three different ways to do it. The other thing is you're, if you're going to have this going to be a discounted item, you can apply the group to it. You can definitely have the maximum price. Um, and then you, this is another great thing is that you can, when you, and we're going to get to this in a second, when you're actually putting your inventory together, you have your minimum recipe profit percentage. This is setting your margin for what it costs you. So that's a great thing right there to just go ahead and auto adjust prices that way. So if you're maintaining your inventory, hopefully you can see that you can do that pretty well. Now the other thing you can do is the lot max quantity for wings or bagel buckets or even, uh, even beer buckets you can use this for. And the same thing as well for the lot child. And the child and parent relationship we'll discuss in inventory. Um, that's pretty much it for page two. So let's go back to page one, and I just wanted you to, you to see as well that the, you're seeing that these shortcuts are appearing throughout the software. So we can either done or save, um, use your, you can edit force modifiers for this particular item, and you can auto price. You can also apply the recipe to this individual item right here. So there's a, a lot of great shortcuts within this item feature. Now let's create an item. So this screen, you can see we have two spaces that we're going to be able to use. So let's go ahead and pick this space here. So um, we can actually do something pretty fun here. We can actually choose that this same item has the same attributes of, let's say, marinara linguine, which is a great feature. So you don't have to go through and just arduously create all the same stuff. Now what you can do is you draw that information in, and then what you can do is go through and edit, and we'll say, actually, we're going we're gonna to make this 1095. And let's actually name this Papa's Pasta. You have a secondary language name. This is going to go under the food category. And then we can actually choose the button picture name. But let's not do a picture. Let's actually just do a color here. And oh, let's pick gray. And uh, we can choose a larger picture, et cetera. This is not a top level item. We have our price here, 1095. We have this. This is just going to go to kitchen. Uh, we just have one printer in, in that case. It is available. None of these other things are going to apply except for tax one. Kitchen sort number is going to be four, and that's just the where it's actually going to be positioned. As an entree, you want it positioned a little bit lower. Um, we can apply an, uh, a description here, et cetera. That's pretty much all that you need for an individual item like this, and you can apply all these other things that we'll talk about for buckets, et cetera. So um, let's go ahead and save that and be done. And you can see that Papa's Pasta is right here. Now, one of the things we can do is we could duplicate it and move it over to make it a little more uh, 
I guess, you know, just aesthetically uh, appropriate. But let's go ahead and see what that looks like within the actual menu. So let's close out of here. And we're going to go to Dine In. And let's go to Pasta. Papa's Pasta is right there. And you can see it looks exactly the same way that it looked in that back screen. And that's how to create an item. Let's talk for a second about top level items and sub level items. You can see right here that we're in soups and salads and we have French onion, clam chowder. So all of these different soups right here, basically we're going to choose between cup or bowl. Um, and you know, these are things that you're going to have to think of for your business and there's a lot of different ways to actually ring in orders for your items. So what we can do here is when we click on something that's already been chosen as a top level item and let's go to yes so I can show you how to create a top level item. If you see this right here, we have this is a top level item. If we were to unclick this, those pages one and two are going to reappear. But let's go ahead and click it because, you know, prices and all those modifications don't really matter because what's going to matter is on the sub level. So we're, I just wanted you to see that. We're going to save it and be done. So now let's click on it again and we're going to say no to actually edit sub level items. And you can see here we've got a cup and we can edit that. We've got a bowl price and we can edit that. So right now we have a cup of French onion soup. And here's all of our different pricing. And you can see that basically all it was was a director. The top level item is a director to send you to whichever different choice that you want to go to. If you want to go to the sub level items, you're going to click no, and you're going to make these edits as are appropriate. Let's add in a little discussion about forced modification. Forced modification is requiring the, the user, the cashier, the server, to choose specific items before they can move on to another item or another screen. And let's look at a couple of things that's going to work that way. So we're going to go right into the item and we're going to adjust our forced modifiers, okay? We have seven different levels. Now we were talking early, earlier about coursing. Let's say we have the chef special and first level is going to be salad, second level is going to be appetizers and so on, and we can have seven different courses that way, okay? Now, we did talk about sub-level items, and you can use coursing that way, but with respect to force modification, that it is a requirement to move along to another screen, force modifiers are going to be the best way to do it. So let's look here. We're at the New York Steak again. And now, now, granted, these are all um, uh, shortcuts. So you can see that we're, we have all of these items here. So we don't have to just do only the New York steak. We can actually move on to other items. Now, granted, these are the defaults, medium, baked potato, and baked potato. So right, right, right now we have two side items and we have the, the, um, the temperature of the steak here. So let's do, move this drop down so we have medium, medium rare, medium well, rare, and well done. And we can edit those. We can delete it, and then we all have all of our sides here. We have a baked potato, coleslaw, etc. And you can edit those as well, side salad. And we have the second side as well. So you can see that fourth modification is a great way to really get orders appropriately sent to the kitchen. Now that you know how they work, let's actually look and see what they look like. So the modifiers button right here is not going to appear until you actually have something populated on the invoice. So we'll click modifiers now that we have something in there. This will show all and you can actually click through and we'll talk about the modifier builder template, etc. And we can actually see that these individual items are created this way. So you have all the extra items here, the add that, that are appropriate to this product. Now, granted, this is all your bar mixing and everything. And then here are some specific toppings. Now, this is toppings for like pizzas and things like that. But you have charges there. And if your restaurant, uh, your restaurant model really allows you to do that, you can really maximize this benefit. So I just wanted you to see that that's what this screen is going to look like. And you can see all of these specific items. And you have the page down button here as well and the page up button that's going to give you the, all the direction that you need to be able to select your correct modifier. Let's talk for a minute about menu modifiers. We're going to go to setup. Menu setup, we're going to go to menu modifiers. So you see here, every single modifier in the entire system is right here, and it does need to be inputted here. And something I would like to point out as well is we've got basically four different modifiers of beef. We've got a ex extra large, a small, a medium, and a large. All of those do need to be put on there to actually create them as a modifier. And you can create a cost. So you see right here, additional cost is going to be $1 for this large beef. So menu modifier is beef. And that's one of the things is that you, you can't really have the names be the same. It can't be just beef. 
It's got to be beef, space, parentheses, L or medium, and just communicate in that way in the system so that you can actually appropriately address each of these issues and different pricing. Because if there's going to be a different price, like medium is going to be 75 cents, you want to definitely have them as a separate modifier. So it is a little bit longer of a process when you're programming your menu, but it's going to help you in the long run. So you're going to have an additional cost here. You can definitely have the picture as well. Show the caption. You can hide it. And this, that you can create this as a pizza topping. So if this is a sandwich uh, meat, you definitely don't want to use this same modifier. So you want to do like S beef medium, you know, something like that. You want to definitely keep those itemized in that way to be able to edit these appropriately. So the other thing I'd like to mention is you can actually, for this individual menu modifier, if it, you're going to have like a crab cake or something like that, that's just a, a, modif a modification, it isn't a whole entree, you, and you just want to have a modifier, what you can do is actually have the modifier recipe, and we'll just, I don't know if I have crab cakes in here. Yeah, I don't. So we'll actually just use, let's just use blue cheese. And let's say we have a, a special blue cheese that we're going to make. So we can actually create this recipe, and then we can edit the recipe right there. Now, we're going to talk about editing recipes, but I wanted to show you this, that this is actually a pretty advanced feature. We're not going to cover it here. But hopefully, you can see that this is a totally different screen and creating your own recipe for just a little modifier. So that's kind of like uh, micro editing or micro recipes. So we're going to talk about macro recipes, how to actually do a recipe for an entire entree in just a few minutes. But that's how menu modifiers are going to work. When talking about modifiers, we do have to bring in two specific portions of modification that will actually give you a more convenient approach to creating modifiers. The first one is the modifier builder. So let's take a look at it. Now you can see that we have no templates set up. So what we'll have to do is the typical thing. We're going to create a new one, and it's already here. So we press new, and we're going to call this uh, sides. So we have the sides here. Now, this is very similar to what we had to do with the, uh, the other modifiers. But we're going to press this, and we can actually create our own touch screen here. So let's go ahead and create an entire screen. Now, that's the whole point of the, um, the, the modifier builder template. It gives you the ability to create individual screens that you can apply to individual items or groups of items and accomplish the same thing as just creating individual modifiers, which can get a little arduous. So also, you're going to see some very similar characteristics to forced modification. And we'll show you how those can be used in tandem. So we have the modifier name. Let's call these potato rolls. And we can actually create all of these all over again, the no, add, extra, light, exchange, double, triple, half, all those different things. And we can select hidden entries as well. And then we can also apply cost modification to each one of these. Now, an another great thing about this is that the, the forced modifiers give you the ability to actually have two of the same um, the same item, and let me show you that. I really, I feel like that's going to best show you what to do. So we'll, let's go to something that has forced modification. So we're going to go to these forced modifiers, and you see that we have those seven levels. And let's actually go to a menu item, and we'll go to one of these entrees that has it. So let's pick this New York strip steak again, and we'll look at the forced modifiers. Now you see here, the baked potato appears twice. And you can actually pick that item twice with forced modification. With the modifier builder, you don't have that ability to choose the same item twice. Okay? So if you're gonna if you're gonna set up a specific item where they can have the ability to double something without uh, specific cost, definitely this is the way to do it with forced modification. And we'll show you how to use those in tandem in just a second. So let's go back to the modifier builder template, and we're gonna choose sides again. And you have all of these different screens right here. There are going to be eight different screens that you can create. So you can create the size. So you want to get a little bit of a general feel about what you're trying to create. So you, we're going to create you know, potato rolls here. And there's an additional cost, no. Exclude from builder, no. And you can actually apply all of these individual things with the click of each button and be ready to go. So it just is based on your specific menu. So then we click Done, and that individual item is created. So now let's create another side, and let's call it mozzarella sticks. Let's 
keep it short. And we're going to say no, add extra light exchange double on that as well. And we're going to keep those. So you can see that you can go through here and you can actually create eight different screens with all these different buttons right here. And you can click on it and edit those. The other thing I wanted to show you is how you can edit the modifier builder type name. You can have a default action. You can have minimum selections and maximum selections. So, you know, with this case, let's just say two maximum selections. And minimum would mean forced modification. So let's go ahead and just, you see these two buttons here. Now you can create however many you'd like, but since we just have these two buttons here, let's go ahead and save this and close. And let's go back to that New York strip steak and add this. Yeah, let's do that. New York steak. So page two, modifier builder template. All we have is sides here, okay? Now this is gonna seem a little repetitive. This is just for demonstration of how you can actually build your menu. There's an ability here to be very creative with how you're gonna build your business with respect to modifications. So we're gonna assign that modifier builder template. And remember, we have this shortcut right here if we wanna adjust that. And feel free to use that at any time. So let's go back. Now let's actually go to the menu and let's look at that steak again, okay? So now let's go to entrees, New York steak. Now this is, remember, this is forced modification, okay? So we're gonna choose medium, we're gonna choose two sides, and then right here you see that we have the no, light, add, extra, all these things, and these two deals. Basically, you have these sides that you can use, and you have all of the no's and all that kind of stuff right there, and you can really apply this. now. The thing about it is it's not forced, so you can actually click finish and move on, or you can actually choose one and proceed. So this is a very basic view of the modifier builder template, but you can see that there's a lot of convenience because you actually can utilize forced modification in tandem with the modifier builder, and you can actually force these as well with the minimum selections, but you can see how you can use them in tandem or you can use them individually, and that's the flexibility that the software has to offer. Now let's talk about an additional kind of, of modification. It's the pizza builder setup. It's under setup, menu setup, pizza builder setup. So let's click on that. And you can see here, this is a great feature. Um, and you saw earlier when we were, we were just like putting uh, the delivery orders together, you saw that you actually have a pretty great screen to choose those crusts, to choose you know, the sizes, choose all these different things. And right now you can actually have up to 10 sizes you can have the output name and a secondary language all right here on this one screen. And then you can choose your crust right here. Now, remember, you can edit a crust and you can add. So we just would click and we would either add or edit. And, you know, really we don't have anything to do here. We can, we can add another crust, but that's something you can definitely do very easily. The other thing we'd like to discuss are the toppings. All of these toppings are right here. Now, one of the things I'd like for you to see are all that there's pricing, there's different sizes, and you can see we actually go from size two to size three all the way through here, and we have all these L's next to them for large, and then mediums here. Now that's one of the things you can use, either of those modifier, like the, to create just modifiers or use the modifier builder, and the great thing about the modifier builder as well is that you can actually have multiple prices for an individual item that is repeated within the same builder and you can have multiple prices but it has to be in different modifier templates. So the great thing about this is that you're just clicking through on specific tabs and creating your entire restaurant recipe, your entire restaurant um, uh, menu of pizzas. So right here as well, you can see that here's all of these specialty pizzas and the default price. This is creating that one screen that we're going to go to that is the pizza screen. And this entire builder is what you're going to apply to those individual menu items. And let's look at that real quick. So let's just be done with this. And let's go back to, let's just show you how those were set up. Hopefully that wasn't too quick, but you definitely can um, go into your individual computer and explore that for yourself and try some things out and I would encourage you to do that create items play with them really you know figure out how to do it because one of the things that happens with people is they don't really experiment with the system and they kind of go with just with what they know and we want to expand that to give your business the highest uh, efficacy of, of use 
So let's actually go to the pizzas, and you can see basically this is what we've done. A slice of today's pizza, that's an individual item that is created just like any other item, but these are actually using the pizza builder. Every single one of these are using the pizza builder as top level items. And we can actually go through and we can, let's look at all these sub levels. So you can see that the initial sub level is small, medium, large, and extra. Let's click on medium and let's edit that sub level item. And you can see right here, show pizza builder screen. Right here, it's checked. And that's exactly what you're going to need right there to really uh, apply that to the screen, the menu actually. So let's actually go to the menu and let's see what this looks like now. We'll go to the pizza. Now this is the pizza builder screen right here. And you can see, we're going to choose medium. We have our crusts here, all of our toppings, and then half, third, quarter, first half, second half, and you can multiply times two or times three, can remove specific items, and you control it by touching this item or this item, whatever you populate within here, just like we showed you a few minutes ago. And that, in essence, is the pizza builder screen.